The first thing I did was to draw the front part of the house. Then I erased all of the windows, but not completely, I left the lines just a little bit. I used a yellow marker to color all of the windows yellow, and I used the faint lines to guide me here. If you don't erase the lines and just color over them, it will be very difficult to remove them later. So it's better to just erase them before you start coloring. I outlined the house with a pink marker and I ignored the roof because I will cut it off later. I started coloring from the top and I tried my best to keep the line straight and as long as possible. Sometimes I went over some of the lines or I would leave some space in between the lines just to give it some texture so that it doesn't look like a child's drawing. I then cut out the shape of the house and the door as well. After that, I measured and drew the windows on thin cardboard. I decided not to draw the windows directly on paper because I thought it would look flat and boring. I carefully cut out each individual window and the door. I used a non-toxic acrylic marker to color all the windows and the door. I used non-toxic water-soluble glue to attach the windows. There was some excess glue when I pressed the window frames down, so I used a brush to remove all of it. I traced the outline on a piece of cardboard and I cut it out carefully. I did the same for the back of the house, just without the door. I made sure that the pieces match perfectly and then I applied some glue along the edges of the cardboard. I also put some glue where the windows will be, but not on the other parts of the house because it would just make the paper wet and funny looking. I made sure again that everything matches and I pressed down gently but firmly on the places where the glue is. Then I cut out two strips of cardboard I measured out how wide I want my house to be and then I wanted to make some flaps. I uh, drew the lines and I cut only on one side. This is very useful because they will bend at a better angle. I wanted to attach it on the front and the back side of the house just to form a base so that the house would be able to stand before I add the other elements. You can see here that I glued the flaps on the inside of the front part of the house and I did the same for the back part, but I cannot show you that because my camera stopped working. Next, I made the roof by cutting out some cardboard and painting it black with a marker. Once again, I used a non-toxic acrylic marker. Don't use the regular one because it can be toxic for your hamster. The roof will be a bit wider than the house, so I also colored a little bit from the inside. I bent the roof from both sides to make it more flexible, so that it can follow the curve of the house a bit better, and this also gave it a great texture. After that, I tried out the roof just to see if everything fits, and then I put glue on top of the house. Again, I'm using non-toxic water-soluble glue. I dislike using hot glue because even if it is non-toxic, it can still cause a blockage in the intestines, so it's best avoided. Next, I did the side pieces and in retrospect, I should have done them first because it would be easier to hold while drying. The process was the same as for the top. I cut the cardboard, painted it with a black marker, and then I put some glue on the base and stuck the cardboard on top. 
Because this kind of glue dries very slowly, it is necessary to hold the pieces for a few minutes. I plan to use this house in Nosy's Halloween cage setup. I will probably add some spider webs, maybe dark silhouettes on the windows, or something else that I come up with. 